Hey everyone, Josh here with a new video on how to get a forest dedicated Steam server all set up and customized so you and your friends can join over the internet. There are a few steps to make this process happen and I'm going to show you how to do all of them as quick as possible. So if you load up the forest and click on co-op and then join game, you're going to be greeted with a list of game browsers and games that are all in here. We're going to get you in the dedicated internet part. There are a ton of them there, and you can join a lot of them. So I'm going to call it something to the scrapyard, and you can see nothing is there, just to confirm that I'm doing this. So go ahead and minimize this, and the first thing you want to do is load up Steam. And if you've bought the forest, then you go to Library Tools, and you'll see the forest dedicated server. Double click that, and go ahead and install it. The download is about a gig in size, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward that for you, and show you what to do next. So after that's all said and done, you're going to get an icon on your desktop called the Forest Dedicated Server. The first thing you want to do is actually delete that icon because you need to recreate it. Because this one doesn't let you cut, do a couple options. So you go to the folder where it installed to, which should be in your Steam Apps, Common, and then it'll say Forest Dedicated Server. Double click that, right click on the Forest Dedicated Server, send to desktop, and that creates a shortcut. The reason you're doing this is so you can run it in administrator mode because certain things need to run in administrator mode to function properly. So make sure that's checked in the compatibility, hit apply, hit OK, and it'll always run in administrator mode. So go ahead and double click that. And once you do, you're going to get this black box. And nothing interesting is going to happen, but that's OK. You starting the server actually created the server configuration file, which is very important. So you can go ahead and close this, and then you're going to open up the location of the configuration file, which is, if you go to My Computer, C, Users, and then choose your user, click on the little folder to where you can actually add your own text, type backslash app data, that opens a hidden folder, click local low, and then you're going to click SKS, then you're going to click the forest dedicated server, and then DS, and there's your server file that you just created. So right click and send that to the desktop as well so you don't have to go through that bull crap of opening all those folders. Put it there. You can close this window now. And then go ahead and double click that server file and let's edit it. Once you've got it open, you're gonna see a lot of forward slashes, words, and just text in general. The next step is opening three different ports that the forest needs. And that's port 8766, 27015, 27016. To do that, open your internet browser of choice, then go to your router's IP address. And if you don't know how to port forward, I have a great tutorial on that, and I'll link the video in the description and on the screen so you can go ahead and see that. It's an awesome tutorial that explains everything about port forwarding, and you will need to know that and do that to get this server up and running. So once you got this all done port forwarding, you can go ahead and close that. Next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and change the server name right here. Or you can keep it the same, doesn't matter, but I'm going to go ahead and put the scrapyard for us just so we can filter it out and find it easier. Then you want to choose the max number of players, which you can have up to eight, I believe. I don't think you could have any more than that. So I just keep mine at eight just in case multiple people want to join. Then you can enable or disable VAC, which is the Valve Anti Cheat System. Um, by default, it's off. And then you want to go ahead and set a password, just a default password to join, or not if you want random people to join. Then you can go ahead and enter administrator password, which just unlocks a couple of server commands. Nothing too special about that. And then next is where you're going to have to put in a Steam token that you got to create. I've provided a link in the description to quick link you to the web page you need to go to. And you do have to meet a few requirements on your Steam account to create a token. And the requirements are right there where you have to be... Your account must not be limited. It can't have been banned. You can only have a thousand at a time. So right here, you're going to go ahead and put in the forest's app ID, which is 242760. And then go ahead and just put in the description of what your token is. I'm doing a YouTube vid here. You go ahead and create it. And once you do, if you've successfully logged in and created it, it generates one automatically for you. Now this token can be reset a few times, but it, it can't be reset too quickly. So you copy it and go ahead and paste it in right here after your Steam, server Steam account. Then I change the save intervals to five minutes just because you can have them whatever you want. Game difficulty normal. Int type continue just in case you don't want 
just in case you want to be able to continue the game if somebody leaves. I put my save slot in slot 5 because that one's hardly used. And then I also show my event logs just so you can see what your server's doing. And then you go ahead and put a contact email, which it doesn't matter what you put. So I just put my at gmail.com. And then once you got all that taken care of, your server is ready to go. So go ahead and save it. So go ahead and double click the forest dedicated server icon and it's going to bring up a command prompt box this time along with that black screen and the command prompt box is going to say some things. Now a quick note, right here where it says set a logon, sometimes that can freeze and then say failed to connect to steam. That just means that you got a bad steam token and you have to reset that steam token, regenerate it, and then re-put it in your server file for that to work. That happened to me and it took me so long to figure out why it was doing that. But once I did, you're going to go ahead and see the rest of the messages. Now it's going to sit in this screen for a little bit, for probably a minute or so. So I'm fast forwarding to let you know the right time to join. As soon as you see starting enemy spawn, then you're good to join your game. So go ahead and you can minimize this and load up the forest. Go to the dedicated internet tab. And you could also go to the land tab. But you're going to see it in both. So go ahead and filter by name, let's do Scrapyard, and then bang, there it is, the Scrapyard Forest. So you're going to go ahead and hit join, and then type in the password that you created in the configuration file. And once you've done that, you can also do the admin password, and then you want to hit join. And the game's loaded. So you are in your own dedicated server now. Anybody could join if they have your password, or if you made it with no password, anybody could join at any time. Everybody's always going to start on the airplane. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it. Build a temporary shelter. And then I'm going to save it. Because once you save in your temporary shelter, you can load in right at your temporary shelter again with all your items that you had. So bam, I saved, and then you want to exit, find your game in the list again, which go by filtering it out if you wanted, or mine's right there at the top. But you're also actually going to see, instead of just a join option, you're going to see a continue option. Now you want to hit continue, and then type in the password, and then hit continue again, because if you hit join any of them, it's going to start you on the plane again, and you don't want to do that. So go ahead and hit continue. And once you spawn, you're going to be in your temporary shelter again with all the stuff you've collected. And there you have it. That is how you go ahead and create your own dedicated server. And after that, you're good to go. You can have anybody join at any time, and you can customize it any way you want. If this video helped you in any way, be sure to like and subscribe and check out other videos I have. I have a forest playlist with different things like crafting and how to get secret weapons like the new secret weapon in the alpha 6.0 update you can do that by clicking the link in the top linking to all the other videos and thanks for watching